Guys, welcome to the Doom Hello. Drop podcast with Santa C and the Finn. The podcast? The Doom Drop. The Doom Drop podcast? That sounds pretty good, Sam. I like that. That's what we're going with. That's what we've Here chosen. We, we don't really know what we're doing. We're just messing around. This is really an excuse to, to hang out and talk more. It's literally that. It's literally just we want to be able to have an excuse to come together, have a good time, maybe talk about some super serious stuff, but in a chilled out way and uh, not be too divisive, much more moderate in our ways of you know, viewing it and being more nuanced and what have you. We've had a lot of uh, weird conversations, fun conversations uh, off mic or off, uh, off stream. And uh, yeah, this would be fun to share them with an audience as well and see how it goes. I think it'll be fun. Yeah. Soon. I think so too. So we're we're not gonna have like a super strict structure. It's gonna be a lot different than our usual like casting where we're always talking right. about StarCraft. We're planning to just talk about whatever. We'll talk about StarCraft sometime too, but Yeah, and if we do talk about certain subjects, like say we might we might talk about StarCraft, we're not we're gonna go into the nitty gritty like we might in a cast, you know, we might just like maybe talk about like things on a more surface level, not necessarily on a game level. Or like ph philosophy behind uh, certain things instead of yeah, yeah, yeah. actual strategy or anything like that. And exactly, if we do talk about uh, games or uh, tournaments that are going on right now, we're not going to give any spoilers. So don't worry about that, guys. Absolutely no. We're not going to talk about the ASL guys. You can chill. Well, oh, did you hear about? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did. Uh... We did agree that we were going to talk about the ASL a little bit. We were going to talk about the Taste Tosis broadcast. You were just watching. Yes. That. Yeah. And we're not going to talk about the games, but we're going to talk about the interesting dynamic of the audio setup and how it's, it's kind of like an ASMR stream where you've got like the 3DO mic with the two ears on either end. And it's like you got, you know, taste, taste, Tasteless on the left just whispering into your one ear and you got Artosis on the right or whatever. It's just, it's, it's bizarre, man. Yeah. I was. When I first started listening, I only had one headphone in. And I was like, what the hell is going on right now? This is tasteless talking to himself and the, like a whisper of artosis in the background. But I put I put my other headphone in and I realized. And then uh, it's, it's, it's a weird audio setup, man. And they also yeah. have, I noticed they also have like a mute button. They both must have a mute button for when they cough. And whenever they mm -hmm. cough, they the mute button turns off all sound to that ear. So like the tasteless right. goes to cough and then you can't hear anything out of your left ear for like, you know, so 30 weird. seconds or whatever. It's so strange. It's like you're deaf in one ear all of a sudden. It's like, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know what exactly. It's almost, but it's almost a skill. It's a skill that they even got the channels set up that way. I mean, I'm sure you and I in the struggle getting set up in a hotel room, we probably would mess up as well, but we also probably wouldn't have better figure out how to even get that set up if we tried, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't know how you would do that. How how would you get the, the left and right ear? Maybe I could figure it out if I really tried, but that's uh that's that's yeah. uh, that's some skill right there. <laughs> well is it is it possible that they tried using like a by like in the ASMR streams, the one of those like binaural microphones, not the ear one, but where it's like it's got like two microphones kinda angled pointing in different directions and they've got that sitting between them. So it's like technically got two channels or maybe I don't know. I can see that they have they both have lapel mics. So they're using lapel mics and uh... I think the problem with the lapel mic is that uh they pick up more sound from around you. So if uh, you know, Artosis is talking, Tasteless's mic might pick it up. So I think that's yeah. why they've gone left and right, so that it's not uh, like a double voice. You know what I mean? You can't hear like a, an echo. But well, that would be the mics. problem, right? If you've, yeah. got, if you've got like two mics side by side, they have to be really directional and really well set up to not have any kind of like bleed from the other microphone, right? That's right. So I definitely understandable. It's it's just a little bit funny. Um totally different from your regular asl uh yeah. setup but you, it really Although, makes you appreciate like when they were in studio how good yes. they sounded <laughs> just about to say the same thing exactly because it's been quite a long time since they've actually been sat side by side and they said themselves like they, they cast better like that because they're not interrupting each other there's no you know delay on discord no you know bad audio from discord lag or whatever yeah, and just the fact that you're side by side, I think they, that's more their natural dynamic, right? That's pretty much how they 
came up together mm-hmm. side by side and that was where they developed so going back to that i'm sure you know must feel something for them as well i'd feel a certain way about it as well and the asl team or the the africa tv team uh, that was in charge of their audio back in the, the studio days was uh was pretty pretty decent man they had a really good mm. uh, really really good no bleed audio even inside of the studio you know with the che- fans cheering and stuff that's pretty damn yeah. good i mean it really makes you appreciate yeah. it but uh it it is what it is we're in a new age of starcraft here where it's like we're not reliant on those big companies anymore we don't get the benefits we don't get the the negatives either though hell it's about time yeah you know, it's it's a it's a different world it's a different world the youtube youtube landscape the Twitch landscape has completely changed, right? Right, right, and and it will continue to change. Like change is the only constant that you can be damn sure about. Yeah, for sure. And I hope that it's changing in a good direction. I feel like it has, don't you, Shin? I do. I also think that there's opportunities here for not only the scene to be maintained and go forward as like this retro RTS, because we're probably not going to see anything like this coming up in the future. Maybe some RTS games that kind of try and emulate that vein, but they're not going to get anything close to that. You know, or at least it will not be commercially viable. Maybe there'd be something community made with the assistance of AI or something, right? Maybe who knows? But um, I, yeah, I think. It's going to be maybe go into the halls of fame as like this retro RTS that's going to be played for many years to come. I don't know if that's going to be like decades or how, I don't know. But what I do know is that there's the opportunity though for us to breathe new, not just maintain that, but also breathe new blood and life into that and, you know, start coming up with some more content ideas. Streamers are doing a lot with like finding ways of like mining for content in other ways. You know, that's just like shenanigans on the ladder, like doing funny stuff, you know, or whatever it is. Well, Koreans have found out like a brand new way to mine content on the uh, in 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 StarCraft Red War with uh, Pro League, and I was telling telling you a little bit about this, but I'll drop some facts mm-hmm. on you right now because I've been researching this. Go on. Uh, a bunch of different players have made over a hundred and fifty thousand dollars this year from Pro League alone. Ho ho ho! Yeah, Christmas has come. There's some crazy stats out there for these guys who are who are doing the pro leagues. Uh, and, oh, that's you know, uh... ASL tier players like uh, Soul Key, Rush, uh, even Sharp. Just these different, really, really good players who play in the pro league very, very regularly. The pro league is just blown up recently. It's it's a community led thing. I can tell you guys about nice. it a little bit. It's a Pro League that has, it's a league, it's a tournament basically that has no administration at all. It's completely run by the streamers. One of the streamers will decide that they're going to open a Pro League and then they invite everybody else in. They agree on like a buy a buy in amount. Um, how much is it going to cost to get each player or how much does each player have to contribute to the, the Pro League that uh, that day? Mm-hmm. And then the streamers will go out and ask their fans, their streams, to donate for their buy-in. So they generate they, that. Yeah, they generate yeah. the money, and they've they sent you know they pool all the money together, and then they randomly select the people. It's about there'll be about ten people, and it'll be five versus five, mm-hmm. and they randomly select who's going to be on each team. So at the beginning of the day, right, like. You don't go in and try to like stack the teams. Oh, wow, there's no yeah. there's no stacking of the teams. So you just you they're picking players who are good, uh, who they would want either to play against or to play with. You know what I mean? So they there's no right. like stacking. They just pick the best players, and the better you know the better it is, the more people are going to donate as well, right? So they get the donations in. Um, if they don't ma- meet the donations, sometimes the streamers will put their own money in to reach the buy-in. And then they pull all the money, they split everybody up into two teams randomly, and then they play a huge set of games where it could be up to like 25 games. It's really, really long. It's like the whole day. They go for like six or seven hours. And at the end, one team is victorious, and uh, they take all the prize money. The other team goes... Home empty-handed, and 
it's been crazy this past year in 2023 there was a week uh there was a day excuse me just one day of pro league uh the prize pool was over $35,000 it was like crazy 35 35k oh i mean that's exciting for a lot of reasons saying i mean on the one hand you've got like uh for the gamers by the sorry for yeah for the gamers by the gamers thing going on which is amazing and then the fact that right now the biggest problem i would say with the pro scene has been the fact that they're not making salary money with the pro scene the asl is not going to cover that salary like they have to get it through streaming you know what i mean they have to supplement that income in some way but now with stuff like that it's going to keep everyone like sweet and happy and wanting to maintain that as a career if they're going to get that like guaranteed paycheck kind of thing the old days of the team houses and sponsors uh you know sponsoring big teams is just kind of right. gone right there's no there's right. no sk telecom uh brood war team anymore i don't think and at least they're not sponsoring and you know paying for all, the, all these gamers rent and you know, giving them opportunities like that they have to make their own way so it's really cool to see them figuring that out and one of the big things i want to put into this video coming up is that this is replicable this is something that could mm. be done in other video games as well and other scenes as well because that's they're like making huge amounts of money and the reason is that it's freaking fun it's really fun to yeah. watch all of your favorite streamers play for you know thousands of dollars and it's basically like the tournament feel it's like a really intense tournament feel where everyone's trying their absolute hardest but you exactly. can get it every single day. You don't have to wait months and months and months for an ASL. Ooh, you know what I mean? Baby. It's just like show up and there it is. It's already being played. It, it's just like those old days where we had like two television channels in Korea dedicated to StarCraft games. Imagine that, guys. You wake up in your hotel room, flip on the TV, and there's a the StarCraft game. You flip to the other channel, and there's another StarCraft game. The old times were crazy. The golden age may have ended, but we're ushering in a new era. So the the what was it the Chinese, the Chinese Age of Dragon? The Chinese Year of the Dragon now. So we're in the Dragon Starcraft era, but new golden era, hopefully. Uh, if you're a Korean speaker, I mean, it's definitely a golden age right now. It's a little bit hard for us uh, English speakers because we can't really, uh, you know, participate as well in the uh, pro league that's going on because we just don't really understand what they're saying. There's so much chatter going on. Of course, it would be so much fun. Just imagine your favorite streamers in whatever game. Think about like uh, Melee or, you know, Super Smash Bros. Mm -hmm. Melee or something. Smash, Smash. You know, you've got five or ten streamers together and they're split into two teams. And then you're watching, you know, Team A, all five of them in a Discord chat talking. And then one of them plays and all the other ones talk shit about them and like, you know watch the game and <laughs> it, it's just a lot of fun yeah it's really really fun to watch and you can watch yeah. their first person view and you can watch them from like an the observer perspective or you can watch them from the other team's perspective it's really really cool it's there's there's so much content to be mined there it's kind of insane yeah i mean and, and the stream is already kind of like waking up to like just how much of a gold mine like pretty much anything that they do like they, they can get content or anything if they, if they had games against foreigners they could make content making fun of the foreigners and the foreigners could have content like like you know dealing with the, the, the pros or whatever you know what i mean like there's so much content out there and we just need to you know help usher in this this new golden range golden age yeah there's uh there's lots of opportunities out there man lots of opportunities and we're looking we're looking into those things we've we've got some big plans on the on the horizon here we'll we'll see what we can yeah, do boy. but there's um yeah we've, we've got ideas and we're we're looking forward to to bringing those to you guys yeah and i think what's great about that saying is that we're not doing it from like uh an omnipotent mindset we're not doing the thing where like we're on twitter complaining about macro issues that we're not actually able to contribute anything towards like we're not complaining about homelessness we're going down to the soup kitchen and actually doing what we can do right mm -hmm. that's right we're contributing to the community that we love and uh, yeah. because it's a small community, we can make a bigger impact. I think that's a good way to look at it. 
in an indirect way, I just kind of called the, the, the StarCraft community homeless and that we were like going there <laughs> to give them soup. <laughs> Wasn't the intention, but it's kind of a funny <laughs> image, guys. <laughs> uh, I was just going to let that go, but maybe some people online might be in the comments slamming away. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> oh, man. Yo, what are you trying to say, Shun? I'm, I'll try and explain it. It's always funnier when you explain the joke, right? <laughs> 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 oh, man. Oh. But yeah, it's good to like just like be able to just come and shoot the shit with you again. And uh, doing it in a format where we can actually you know, put some content out there to entertain people and show them what we talk about sometimes. And also getting a chance to talk about topics that a lot of platforms kind of get wrong. I don't know. Like, uh, or at least when they do talk about them, it's very emotionally charged. It's just like clickbaity stuff, like, you know, trying to like just plug an agenda for the sake of profit. You know what I mean? And everyone's trying to sell something. It's kind of annoying. Yeah. Even when they're talking about it's like, social issues and stuff and things that are really right. important. They're like trying to sell something and they're like, uh, their message is kind of fake in that way. Like, would you really be saying that unless you were selling, if you were selling or if you weren't selling something? Yeah. Yeah, it's... Well, it's like the, you get like, say like some like red pill kind of content where it's like the guy's like, he's, he's giving you like advice on how to get women, but really he's trying to bottleneck you into like joining his course where you give him some money to like learn the real stuff or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's frustrating to watch those type of things man and the way that they characterize women in a lot of those is is um <laughs> it, it's not yeah. help, it's not helpful to any person who's trying Healthy to get laid. it's not hel it's not helpful to try and or for anyone who's trying to find like a real connection i was watching well, something this morning it. i was watching something this morning hold on i i i, I just want to sure. get this one out there is there was a guy who was talking to a girl about body count and then he was saying like if you're traveling across Europe and you wanted to drive a car you know you're going to pick a car to drive across Europe um you know would you want the the old car with tons of mileage on it or would you want the new car with no like dude you can't like why are mm. we comparing women to cars that makes Also that is, that's, that's so actually silly. not even true though. Hang on a minute that's not even true though because you know, it could you you'd actually kind of want some experience. You want her to at least have some idea what she's doing. You know what I mean? Like, like even that doesn't even necessarily apply. So I don't know, man. Weird no, logic. it's a terrible, you... terrible way terrible to terrible take. You're just it's logic. A terrible take, man. It's a terrible yeah. um, metaphor. Like, but I understand what they're doing. You know what I mean? I understand. That it's like okay, men understand cars, right? Let's let's compare a woman to a car. Like, yeah. you, you can't. That's not a comparison that you can make. It has nothing to do with but in a, a way being. it's indoctrination though. When I mean, think about it like this, in a way it's like brainwashing to a certain degree, in the sense of they're trying to really help the the other guys objectify the women even further, right? They want to set that premise up first. Like, first of all, let's think of the women as objects. And then from that framework, this all the other stuff will seem like it's more palatable from that framework. You know what I'm saying? Maybe. It's it's strange it's like this is the thing that women really don't like is when people you know when guys objectify them and you're like you're as a person who's like an influencer yeah, yeah. pushing that towards people like t telling mm -hmm. men like this is what this is the way you should think about women right like you should think about them like a car this is the way women should think about themselves it's like that's that's just not it's not relevant. It's not smart. It's not anything good for men or women. It's just silliness, and it's not but helping it, anyway. It's very strange, and the whole body count thing is another whole topic maybe we could talk about. Yeah. yeah. Well, would you, okay, well, what about? Do you want to go into body count right now, or do you want to like skip over that? No, we can we can talk about it if you want. It's up to you. How do you feel about body count then? So, like, so all right, so. Do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about our body count this, just for the purpose of argument? Or I don't think our body I, I, our I, body counts okay. even matter at all because we're men, right? The no, whole no. issue around it right. is like that women having a high body count is really bad, and yeah, I feel yeah, yeah. like it's it's kind of stupid and disgusting. It's really really silly. Well, 
okay okay so what what, what okay what, first of all let's define body count so does but what does body count mean to you like is that like penetrative penetrative sex only do you include like you know oral <laughs> sex like where's the line what where, 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 where are we drawing the boundary first let's define it well i don't think it matters what we think i think it, it what really matters is what these red pill guys are talking about right like they're they're always discussing uh about women's body counts and like talking about how uh having mm. a lower body count is better that men biologically want a lower body count you know what i mean like they're they're mm -hmm. you know programmed to want a lower body count i feel like this is all social programming what you're talking about in that yeah like yeah the body count thing only matters if it matters in your culture you know what i mean yeah and and they're like creating they're trying to like create or push this culture on you by saying to you that it is like a biological thing you know what i mean they're, 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 they're trying to like they're not just trying to program socially they're also trying to deprogram so what they're trying to do is they're trying to like deprogram all of the progress that you that the society has made since those more traditional ways of thinking time you know what i'm saying so like all that they want to override that as well so they're not just giving you new programming they're also trying to like Deep put program. a veil over the yeah de uh, to put a veil over and to deprogram all that other stuff that maybe would benefit you in helping you see the nuances and realize the fallacies and what they're trying to push there's it's just a pendulum swinging back the other direction right yeah it's counterculture right it's, it's going to do that it's the right as the right become more right the left become more left and vice versa and, and it'll keep swinging in this way so to speak yeah i um well, let's let's talk about body count, man. Let's let's actually get into sure, let's it, do what it. we actually let's think. do it, man. Can we define it real quick? So, what do you think? I, I'm I'm gonna what I'm gonna think? I'm gonna premise. You go ahead. You define I, it. In my presupposition here, guys, <laughs> body count. So we're talking about the body, right? How many bodies have you had? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but if someone's giving me oral sex, I'm not getting their body. I'm getting one tiny part of them, right? Whereas if you're having like an intimate bond where you're like actually, you know, connected to that fucking person, you're like, you know, inside them. Like there's things that happen differently, right? Like in terms of like serotonin being released and shit. Like, yeah, I mean, obviously the male is like getting more like dopamine and stuff, but yeah. But in terms of bonding and stuff, like yeah, like I would I would say it's got to be the actual penetrative act. You know what I'm saying? In my opinion, uh, I guess you could say like contact count in terms of like slightly, you know, like you know, just oral sex. Like you could like kind of separate the counts. So you could say like if you're talking about sexual contact, I've got fifty, and if you're talking about actual body count, I've got twenty. Whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? I would just think it's a sexual encounter because every sexual encounter is like you define sexual encounter. Like, so it's if like, I if I get into like a car with someone and they <laughs> they touch my penis for five seconds, is that a sexual encounter? It is, right? So that's a <laughs> weird body count to include, I think. Well, it's all it's all experience that informs your your future sexual encounters, right? <laughs> so you include any kind of sexual contact. Mm. For the sake of this conversation, I guess we'll just we'll just talk about penetration because that makes the most sense, I guess. Yeah. Less less. I'm just gonna say I'm just, I'm just gonna put out there. I'm, I'm just gonna put out there. If you if you include any kind of sexual contact, holy crap, is my number high? And I, I hope it's not that way of dealing with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope it's just the penetration now. I think it should be though. I think it should be, man. Uh, all right. Well. The the premise that a lot of these people are talking about is that red pill like high body count is bad for a woman. They don't they talk about mm -hmm. like uh, oh yeah it's it's fine for a man to have a high body count doesn't matter and I think that's really true but that's just again it's about the the it's it's cultural right the problem mm -hmm. problem with like the 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 only problem they have is with a woman who has a high body count and I think that. A lot of it actually, a, a lot of it stems from like yeah, just feelings of inadequacy, honestly. And it does come out in their conversations sometimes. Yeah, man. Can I, can I quickly just say something about that? Mm -hmm. I'm just going to name drop Andrew Tate for a second. Like, I'll be totally real with you. Like, I actually get, I'm not saying he is, by the way, but I get like, like, like almost like, more than just insecurity like it seems like he's he yes he's a grifter and yes he's trying to make money but underneath all that seeing his past i've seen like videos of him before he like even was like that masculine kind of thing like before he was like a kind of like you know 
everything about him kind of makes me think that there is more un under that and it is like a big projection insecurity thing where underneath that is a lot of like needing to be in control because they're so insecure and needing to have that level of crazy toxic toxicity to establish that control just so they feel comfortable in their own skin because they're not okay with themselves as people they're not okay with that you know what I mean? let like, me, uh, they, go on. let me give you a like a concrete example is like when they're talking about the body count issue directly they're saying in a lot of these podcasts or the ones that i've seen is that the uh, reason why they don't like that is because or they don't like the girl to have a high body count is because they don't want their them to be compared to all the other men that the girl's been with like they don't want the you know the girl to be thinking about those other encounters and how much better they were or how much different they yeah. were you know what i mean and yeah my thought about that is just it's just complete it's crazy it's completely uh, your your own internal monologue you know what i mean that has nothing to do with the woman that is your do, insecurity do you know what the biggest irony of that is is that uh, they will stay worse at sex because if they actually got with women which did have a slightly higher body count and were like more like sexually liberated and knew what they liked here's the key thing knew what they liked because they mm. can then communicate to that guy what they like and that guy actually starts to learn some shit about what to do rather than just like being with inexperienced girls so he doesn't feel insecure. He doesn't know what to do. She doesn't know what to do. What, what do you think happens? Nobody learns anything and nobody gets exactly. better. It's, it, it's exactly. exactly what you're talking about. And um, it's sad. It's sad to hear those justifications because I, I, I can just see the, the insecurity in them. And, uh, and they're like projecting that out to millions of people and it, making it feel like, Oh yeah, that's an, that's, a, that's an okay way to be. Just don't be with some, you know, you're worried about your sexual performance. Just don't get with anyone who's got multiple partners so that you, it's crazy. you know, it's, just get with a virgin like, so that they, they don't know what they're doing, you know, and you could just teach them. You want, you want to run, go out and crawl on the street. You know, what kind <laughs> of logic is that? I don't know. I don't know what's going on with that. It's, um, it's very strange to me. And the whole like biological thing, like the whole, what's it called like argument where they say mm. you know oh it's biological men wouldn't want to be with somebody who has a high body count i don't think that that's true at all what do you think shun i mean i'm sure there's a threshold i'll be real for a second like i'm not talking about me personally i'm just gonna i'm gonna devil's advocate a little bit I'll, I'll, because there's no one else here to like argue for the other side right mm -hmm. um i'll do a little pushback on it as well and um i'll say like I guess there is for some guys a threshold where it's like, okay, well, if she's got a hundred body count, it's like, do I want to have kids with her? Because isn't she like so promiscuous that she won't be sexually happy in the relationship? That's going to be their logic, right? That's going to be like from their angle, that's where they're going to come at it from. Even sure. if there is like deeper insecurities underneath that, that's going to be how they rationalize it. And that's going to be the argument and logic they attack that with, right? Right. But what I'm, this, this is like, yeah, I understand what you're saying. Like the the woman might be, uh, if they're more promiscuous, then they might be less likely to change and and be, you know, uh, and be nurturing mother and nurturing stuff. Mother yeah, and from like, their from their from their angle. Yeah, and like stay with the guy, right? Yeah, you you've definitely got to approach it from that angle too, right? But I'm saying biologically speaking, is it attractive? A girl that has oh, you more... mean just sexually attractive only? You're right, not talking like, about the purposes of reproduction. I'm saying this I'm is the saying, issue. Well, reprodu yeah. like sex sexually attractive and reproductively attractive is kind of the same Different. thing. Different, exactly. mean? but kind yeah. kind of, but yes and no. I think it's like when you talk about sexuality and gender. Like yes, they both have things that overlap, like a Venn diagram, right? But also they are like not necessarily the same thing in terms of definitions and how you apply them. Right, so let's. We've got a person who has like a very high body count, a woman who has a very high body mm -hmm. count, and a man is there. He's still going to be sexually attracted to her regardless of her body count. Am I right or wrong? Oh yeah, no. I would. I would even go. I'd. Actually, I'll steal man you even further and say like 
not even not only that, but I would say I would argue that generally speaking, unless you're like pansexual or something, you're you're like biologically engineered to probably fuck like at least eighty percent of the women out there. If you want, if you had to, like, let's just say hypothetically you had to for whatever reason, you could easily fuck eighty percent of women out there. So then, you're you're already attracted to the woman, right? And mm -hmm. you then think with your logical brain, like you you hear that she has a high body count, right? You think with your logical right. brain, maybe she might be promiscuous, even if we were in a relationship. It's, it's, you know what I mean? She yeah, might, I would, she might be willing to cheat on me, right? Well, can I, I'll put, I'll, I'll push back against the 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 red pill philosophy even further and mm. say like these these people are hypocrites because they actually are the kind of people that do go out and fuck sluts in their mind. They call them mm. sluts, right? So in their mind, they actually do go out and fuck sluts. They don't want to necessarily be a girl. They want a boyfriend and girlfriend thing, right? They want to say want to date this chick but they will go and bang sluts right in their mm -hmm. mind they're going out and banging sluts still and they just look at them as objects and they whatever but the point is is that it's hypocritical because they are the ones that are perpetuating that 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 society because they're reinforcing that behavior with the women because the women are getting what they want by being able to fuck all these guys mm -hmm. and they're, they're the ones that are doing that yeah they're definitely reinforcing the stereotype and also pushing it out to everybody pushing everybody towards that sort of mentality and what well, what I'm trying to say here with the with like this example that I was talking about is that the man is like logically thinking and this is not like a misstep at all that wow that person has a really high body count maybe they're going to you know cheat on me in the future like that's something that is clearly going to go through their head right but whether or not they want to get uh, like wife up that person doesn't have anything to do with their biology i think it has everything to do with like social stigma and shame about like what if we run into someone that she had sex with before do you know what i mean what if what if there's like videos uh, of her online and someone finds yeah. out about it or you know like what if there's like someone mm. from you know my outer social circle that has slept with her before like this is like this is the like social stigma aspect <laughs> of the like the the thought process, right? This is not a this is not a biological thing where like oh men they only want to have sex with and wife up women who have a low body count. This is this is social stigma, and I'm saying like having sex with a woman who has a high high body count. There's no biological basis for that. Like you, you yeah. definitely want to have sex with people who have a high body count. Look at how many people watch porn. You think, like they're looking at those what people in porn videos. They're so attractive. The look, think of how many men want to fuck porn stars. Like, and basically all of them want to fuck porn stars, and they have the highest body counts of anyone, right? Right, right. But I would even, yeah, you know, going further and like say maybe back in like even caveman era. Like I don't think the caveman had any problems with like sharing women in front of each other. You know what I mean? No. No, yeah, if you want to go back that far, for sure. It's it's only because of agriculture and the people, you know, getting into larger societies where the rules of the jungle no longer apply. That's when things, you know, get set up for more, uh, you know, right. th like this, this sort of like monogamous and uh, very like structured relationships actually comes into play, right? Like back... Back when we're talking about like caveman days, and we we're talking about like uh, you know nomadic tribes people, yeah, you know, they don't they don't give a shit. Like they're all just trying to live and enjoy life. You know, like there's not a lot of there's not a lot of fun to be had. There's there's of course, uh, you know the the joy of like feeding your family and hunting and surviving and you know singing and doing all the the you know nomadic tribes people. Uh, cultural things of course those should be fun to you if you're a nomadic tribes person but like just in in the base terms like there's you know there's not a lot of uh really exciting things to do besides getting down and dirty right that's that's it yeah, i mean especially i think you know I can, go back, I can go back even further guys what about like the ice age where we got down to about a thousand humans what do you think those guys are up to do you think they were out playing in the snow or do you think they were huddled in a cave like not necessarily having an orgy but you know that's, what else do you think we're up to like they're doing a lot of fucking in the cave probably do right they got a thousand people they need to survive and they, met, they got went from a thousand to how many billion what do you think they were doing a lot 
Yeah, there's a lot of this weirdness of people like shaming each other for doing things that they're all secretly doing as well, right? Like this. Yeah, this sort of social weirdness. shaming is a big. But do you know what's, okay? I'm gonna touch upon that for a quick sec. What's even crazier is the hypocrisy. Like, mm. say, I'll, I'll bash both sides. Um, so, like, say on the the the, the left, like you've got people that are like on the one hand like expecting you to conduct yourself in a certain way well they'll happily shame different things about you they might like say bash a guy for his other reasons like his height or something or whatever else meanwhile you can't say anything about her weight you know what i mean like they'll they'll body shame you in one way and say you can't body shame them you know what i'm saying there's like there's like a deep deep hypocrisy as well oh, in these there's communities. massive hypocrisy and there's there's even massive hypocrisy uh to those the women who go on those red pill shows, right? I think that that's the uh -huh. reason why they, these things have become so popular. These red pill shows have become so popular is because there is that massive hypocrisy. And in those shows, they ask questions and, and talk to them about things that reveal how hypocritical the left is and how hypocritical like modern society and the expectations um, right. and, and the interests are. It's, it, it, it's so obvious and blatant as soon as they uh, say it it's obviously true the problem is that that gives them like a lot of credence it gives them a lot of credit and then they use yeah. that credit to like give you a garbage solution the solution being like you know super materialistic uh, treat women like objects you know think of women like this rather than like a human being you know think of them like a car or you know <laughs> you, you know treat them or a slot machine yeah, a slot machine a slot is basically machine. what they basically are looking at as you know yeah treat tr you know and and the 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 solution is worse than the problem is what i'll say it's like it's the the their prescription is more damaging than the hypocrisy that exists in the society you know what i mean no, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, speaking of this topic, like what's frustrating is it seems like it, it's cyclical in the sense that because of that divide, where it's like it's so easy to then pick apart the arguments because it's so dumb, right? They go so extreme that it then becomes like you know clown world type stuff, right? But but that creates the content, like you say, right? That 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 explosivity creates the content. So it's just like a self fulfilling prof. prof prophecy because the the more that that's inflammatory and the more that they become shifted apart and further down the, the political poles whatever you want to say like that, so the more that polarity maintains itself it will continue to grow because they, they become further apart like a magnet pushing on itself but but growing in strength and and, and because of that because it's then more divisive it's, it's cyclical and then also makes it more even more inflammatory and even more reactive and even more like dumb that easy to pick apart so it can generate even more content you can have even more like gotcha moments or girls saying dumb things or not being at a list like three countries or whatever and like whatever you know what i mean yeah it's it's funny that that's like a girl thing that they're i i feel like that's a an american or like a, a youth thing right now is that people don't know much about the world because they're so right. involved in their phones, right? Like they're so, it, it, it's really like a problem of our time right now is that people are just getting dumber, even though their their phones are getting smarter. You know, every technology mm -hmm. is getting infinitely better and people are getting dumber and dumber as a result. It's More dependent on the technology. It's like, say, people used to be able to read maps, but now they've got GPS and with the, with the phones and stuff, it's like you you're like it's like elon musk says like you're essentially like now a cyborg right and these people some of them literally can't be separated from their phones like to, to go a whole day without their phone would like maybe feel akin to like losing a limb you know what i'm saying like so and and a lot of people have a lot of emotional issues where they can't even sleep without some kind of stimuli like they're, and that's what you're, you're doing you're like kind of like distracting yourself from like feeling alone so you're like you got a podcast on or some sort of parasocial connection to the world to kind of distract yourself and try to try to go to sleep you know all right, I gotta use the bathroom really quick. I'll be right back. I think you have to use the bathroom. You could have had a catheter, you could have had a bottle. There's <laughs> lots of solutions here saying you're a guy. You figure it out. Or at least I won't be able to do it as easily. All right, we're back. We're back. Hello, guys. Hey, we both we got, both got a bathroom break in. Yeah, I, I hope you do leave the part in about the uh, what I said just before you left. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we'll we'll leave that part in. Nice, nice. I All thought right. it was funny for you guys. Yeah. Uh let's let's just finish up. Let, let's do some finishing thoughts on this red pill thing and then let's move on. Sure. You got anything else you want to say? Sure. I mean, I do want to talk about that in regards to the incel community. So Okay, well that, that, that that'll be that. our, our next topic. But I just want to say that okay. like uh really judge people on the content of their character, um, not on their body count or, you know, what they've done in the past. Um if they've got a high body count, they they have a lot of experience probably. Maybe they are more effective uh in bed, you know, they're more uh, mm. experienced. That can be a good thing. It it all it's all up to their really their character, right? Like is right. someone who's a virgin uh not going to cheat? Is that a guarantee? No. Is it a guarantee that someone who has a high body count is gonna cheat on you? No, it's there. There's no guarantees in this life. There's no guarantees when you go into any relationship. So just keep that in mind, and like, let's let's not judge each each other like that, and let's let's not um, let's not treat each other like cars or you know, you know, compare like use metaphors like that to to uh, talk about women or to talk about men either. It's it's a silly way to do things. We're all human beings. We're not cars or whatever else you want to say yeah man you should go out there and get to know humans like get to know people on a human level first and you know you sure you can be attracted to the humans and it leads to something but yeah treat them as humans man treating people like other human beings also gives you a lot of confidence as well if you realize that everybody is flawed and they have you know all, all the human failings that you know about because you have them as well it's a lot easier to just talk to people. It's a lot easier right. to approach women. It's a lot easier to uh, get those sexual experiences, to have you know those opportunities because you're just better at communicating when you look at people like people rather than you know you're looking at them like a, a whatever metaphor or you know thinking about their body count or thinking about them like these red pill guys want you to think about want you to think about them it's it's harder for you to communicate effectively with people when you're thinking about them like that it, it's better yeah, if you it, could just think of the, about them as a person yeah and it, the reality is it's like sure you might learn to get laid and you might sleep with some girls but the thing is is that you're gonna have to like pretend to not want real intimacy to get with those girls using those like push-pull kind of way of thinking tactics and treating them in that negative way right yeah, sure, you might get laid that way, but you're not going to get that actual human connection. So you're going to be really fucking lonely still. Right. Gonna, because if you, as soon as you care about having some kind of intimacy, all that masculine frame will fall apart, which is the problem, right? So like, they don't want to show any kind of emotion. You know what I mean? Like, like fucking the Andrew Tate, like, I didn't cry. I was doing push-ups while tears rolled down my face kind of thing. You know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah, and there's, there's that, like, whole mentality of, like, uh, like, we didn't get into this yet, but that women are just looking at you as like a provider and that type of thing. And you just, you're just looking at them as like a baby machine. This is, this is a very silly way to think about world and relationships is like women do not just think about men like a money machine, you know, like an ATM, unless you're like, there are women who are out there who do look at men like that. And if you're a person who treats women like a baby machine and you the only thing that's like good about you or that's interesting about you is your money and you uh you know flaunt it and and really like uh, you know work on that aspect of yourself alone and like you know you're really into showing off and having those amazing things you know those great things the cars the houses and like uh, watches and all that stuff and showing it off then that's the type of woman you're gonna you're going to attract and you're, you're, exactly. gonna, you're filling your world with people who you you know you expect these are the people that you are uh that you're attracting right this is this is it's a self-perpetuating cycle like you said yeah and like furthermore like i would even go to the point of what <laughs> it's, it, it's kind of a complicated issue i did have like a really good thing something to say and i lost the exact train of thought i'm just trying to like re regather that train of thought adhd brain um 
you were saying about like the communication thing with mm -hmm. like if you're going to go out into the world and all you're going to care about like the these ideologies might dictate you that all you got to do is go out there and grind money be a grinder like you know basically turn money into your god essentially right and and you you wonder why the gold diggers are at your door right like it's crazy and then furthermore the reason why the gold diggers are at your door is because that's all the value you have to provide you haven't got any kind of emotional intelligence anything else going on that any real woman would even remotely give you the time of day uh re real woman is in like someone who's re well rounded you know what i mean someone exactly who's, who's a, a, a person who's not like just looking for money right someone who's the thing is these guys that these rel these guys who are pushing this red pill narrative are saying that all women are like that that's because all women that they know are like that that's because that's what surrounds them that's how you know that that's what they see every day on a daily basis that's just not the reality of a large vast percentage of women um that they they're not thinking like that mm -hmm. yeah it's not all. it's 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 quite silly guys it's it's quite crazy um let's let's move on let's go to the the incel the the, the incel conversation here let's uh let's talk about that topic instead now yeah so i mean it's kind of like a, a segue from the uh, red pill stuff i guess it's kind of where i wanted to get into it um like, These are the customers of the red pill, right? For the most part, a lot of them. I, I yeah. mean, I would want to say that everybody who watches red pill stuff is an incel. It's, it's just right, right, kind right. of like it, it's really their target audience for who they can sell the most shit to. It's just upset. Right? The people it's just who upset of the red. the people who are the most, uh, you know, they have the the most to gain, the most to lose, or the least to lose, the most to gain by um following somebody and trying to like change their life right they're they're looking for a change right. because they can't uh they can't figure things out so they're they're the ones who are shelling out the most to the people who are like like andrew tate or like uh you know this fresh and fit or whatever yeah but they're gonna build like false um false confidence that's what they're doing they're putting on a social mask of like yeah big masculine frame yeah and uh, but the reality is they're going to do those things. They're going to go to the gym. They're going to get in shape. They're going to feel good about themselves and they're going to get, let's get some shit down. They're going to go grind some money. Yeah, sure. But the reality is a lot of those guys like the, the from the red pill angle, like they've they got ones that are even pretty buff and like look pretty, pretty good. You know, they're still insecure under that. And, and the issue is, is that a lot of women can see that a lot of women that are more astute and like, you know, a bit more well-rounded and like kind of, kind of been around the block a little bit. So kind of know what to look for. They're going to see through those kinds of guys because they can see that it's it's a thin exterior. You know, you you look good and you know, you, but you don't you don't seem good in yourself. You don't seem comfortable with yourself. You know, there's no like actual self love or self esteem beyond that. It's just you've got this aesthetic going on. You've got some qualities going on to try and build your value, but you're still looking at the world from the exterior view only. You know, you're there's no inner connection. There's no the inner world and the outer world aren't coming together, and there's no like the se the separation of mind and uh, society or heart and whatever you want to call it it's uh it's a funny metaphor as well as like if you're a, a scam business you know if you're a business that doesn't really have anything going on and you're just trying to scam someone else out of uh, out of their money or another business out of their money um who are you gonna go for are you gonna go for uh you know experienced investors or are you going to go for people who have no experience they're like just out of high school they don't know what they're doing you know they just have some money and they just have no idea you know what i mean like th this is the this is the kind of counter metaphor is like this is what these guys are doing is they're going after women who have zero experience who are virgins who just don't know anything um because they know what they're selling is is just crap to any girl who knows what they're looking at you know what i mean right exactly that and it won't work like a lot of the the females they're wise to it they, they've seen the red pill content they know the angles they know the strategies 
they might like play along a little bit, but the, the girls that are actually like 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 we're talking about the well rounded girls, that a bit more like down to earth, secure attachment style, you know, not easily manipulated kind of type, like yeah, they're going to see right through that, and they they they've consumed the content. Not all, not all of them, but some of them they're very well aware of all the tactics and the, the how the how they actually strategize and like securing the girls. So it won't be enough for them. You won't get good quality women that way. No, and let's talk about the guys who are trying to get good quality women. Let's talk about the incels, men. Like they are yeah. being directed the crazy standards, crazy standards. They're being directed towards um women who are at a low quality like they're 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 being directed towards women who are not going to make them happy and satisfied but they just they need any sort of connection right they're like looking desperately for a connection and they're being led towards it like a very uh oblique like blank type of connection that's not going to be satisfying no, they, it will be superficial and exterior in every sense of the word because they they also have to not let their emotions come out and totally maintain that frame so that they don't appear weak or whatever they believe. So it's like, yeah, they will never be able to have connection. It's not possible. Like they, they have to do that to, to get laid and then they'll never open up. They'll never have any kind of intimacy. They'll never have any kind of like, they'll probably even feel alone. You know what I mean? Like, even though they're with the girls, banging the girls, even if they're doing really well, they're going to the gym a lot, and they're like, they've got some money coming in. Even if they're doing well in that community, they're still going to be happy. But that's the problem is that we're not even talking about those guys. Right now. We're talking about the incels and voluntary celibates. So that basically means that you know they, they, they want to get laid and they can't. Like they, they desperately can't get laid. But here's the problem. It's not like they're the simps where it's like um, you know they want to – they want to like go you know, chase after the girls and throw money at them and be like, please pick me. It's the opposite. It's like they have these crazy high standards. They're on like some of them on like dating apps like Tinder, like listing all the things on their profile that they expect the woman to be. Like you got to be like hot, you got to be funny, you got to be this, you got to be that, you got to be this. And on one hand, you could argue that the guy is trying to say what he wants, but this is crazy high standards, and he's not going to be all that. There's no way he's going to even remotely like be able to match that value in the woman for a start right so there's no way he'd ever probably get that so he's setting himself up to fail just on that alone and and furthermore he's not said like anything about him in that he's not trying to like sell himself he's literally just demanding these things a sense of, a sense of entitlement so not only is he not getting the women he feels like he's entitled to the women this is where the problem comes from it's kind of what you're explaining is kind of like the opposite, the opposite to these street interviews where the woman, they ask like, oh, how much money do you think your your, man, your husband should make? And they're saying oh. like, oh, yeah, at least, at least 500,000. Some, <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, I'm, like, doing what Zizek, I'm doing what that debater Zizek does. You know, Zizek, the guy that like, he's got that like really deep lisp kind of way of talking and he's a Marxist. Anyway, that's what he does. He like flips everything. Well, he's good at flipping subjects that's kind of like why well, sometimes do. i'll flip it on them i'll like you know take the, that, that angle and show the other side fucking marxist man what the hell mm. it's just like just like the red pill dude like marx Karl marx he wrote this uh great book about how uh capitalism is broken and made a lot of good points about the society and how capitalism ruins lives and how bad it is and then yep. And it made a lot of really, really good points. It really opened a lot of people's eyes. And then yeah. the the prescription of communism is just garbage. It ruins everybody's life. It's, well, it's kind of like you should, Red Pill. You should be asking questions when the majority of the argument is just tearing down the other ideology, right? Yes, yes. So, so that that's that's what we're saying. Uh, that's that's the Red Pill thing. Is like their entire thing is about tearing down the the left and tearing down the the uh the ideas and the the preconceived notions and it's like and dismissing them all as the, the culture thing. right the culture that's been that's been popping up and like yeah that's good i like that i really like that i understand why people like that i like watching it i i honestly do like a lot of what they're saying what they're asking but the prescription is cringe. It is so cringe. Mm -hmm. It's so bad. It, it is actually harming the people, like people who are incels who can't find someone who 
even if you're not like a full on incel, like you can't, I'm not saying, or even if you can get laid, you know what I mean? But you're having a really hard time making like a meaningful connection with a woman right. to where you'd actually want to get with them. And like the guys are having this problem all over where, you know, they're, uh, you know, sleeping with random women. They're not happy with their relationships. They're just like kind of stoked that they're getting laid, but they're not, you know, really enjoying uh, actually being with the women and then they accidentally get one of them pregnant and now they're locked in you know what i mean and they end up with a divorce mm -hmm. and a terrible situation with you know child payments and stuff like that like you, you gotta avoid that as much as possible if you can um people who are like actual incels who who can't get laid are sometimes in a better position than these guys who can get laid but they can't find emotional connection but both of them have the same problem you know what i mean both of them <laughs> Yeah. Are, are in a weird mentality and a weird mindset where they're like you know not able to actually get those proper connections yeah it's, it, there's two separate subsets within those communities obviously uh, but the problem is is that there's so much overlap it comes from the same catalyst you know it's same thing different packaging and this is, i don't know man I, like on the one hand i, I want to empathize a little bit I want to try and like think of angles and talk about um, men's issues a little bit as well going forward. But if, uh, yeah, because um, I mean, there's, there's 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 a multifaceted thing that's happening here. It's not like these things are isolated incidents. Like it's like a, a, a crystal, and like every side of the crystal is like you know a whole new thing. Where it's all still part of the same crystal. And there's so many things that we have. I think we have to kind of dive into a little bit. You know. Yeah, I agree. I agree. There's there's so much interconnectedness with these issues, the red pill, the incel, like men's issues. Um I mean, we're men, we're going to talk about men's issues, of course, but yeah. um yeah, there's it's all interconnected, like women's issues, the women's movement towards equality and like even in some cases like more than equality, like more than their like exactly. original idea of feminism and equality it's like all of that is connected to each other and it's it's really wreaking havoc especially in this country where i where i live right now like there's it's it's maybe not even about the like feminism movement, but but just about equality in general like having women in the mm -hmm. workplace and like in japan it's so brutal the uh cultural um pressures here and the pressure of having you know multiple incomes and then the the lack of like actual intimacy and uh, the the lack of humans being produced here is kind of ridiculous it's off the charts and it's all connected yeah. to to these things and like it's actually like a window into the future i think for a lot of uh, western countries is what's kind of happening here like things are really falling apart in terms of uh, intimacy and, and connection, belonging, and, you know, reproduction. Yeah, and it's going more that way. I mean, we, we could briefly say about, like, Korea, for example. I mean, I can't remember the exact study, but it was something to the effect of, like, by 2700, they're not doing so well in terms of, like, how many of them they're left, you know, so in terms of their natural, like, you know, native population. Um, yeah, it's crazy how bad some of it is. And, and I think um, Elon Musk also talked about how, you know, like there's this like a there's no such thing as overpopulation. It's actually like a, a problem that we're not having enough kids, and that the next generations of people will not physically be able to replace the previous generations. So you'll have like a huge elderly population that needs to be taken care of, and, and not enough people actually keeping society flowing. Yeah, I I agree with that a lot in a lot of different ways it's it's very disturbing and i i thought that it was really interesting to hear from elon that was one of the things that you know i heard i'd heard about it i thought about it a little bit but hearing elon say like we have an underpopulation problem um whereas there's so many voices out there saying that we have an overpopulation problem there's not enough resources there's not enough this there's not enough that like there's been people sounding that alarm for hundreds of years, right? You know, right. hundreds of years, like eighteen in the eighteen hundreds, they were they were talking about overpopulation and how there there wasn't going to be enough food to feed everybody, and we're we're like ten x the number of people at this point, 
and there's still enough food for every, everybody's fine. <laughs> it's 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 very strange. <laughs> uh, like the I mean, obviously everything's not totally fine. There's a lot of like environmental issues that are going on. Um, there's a lot of weird like externalities to having a huge population, but uh, the world is a lot bigger than people think. Um, mm -hmm. the world is the world is really 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 big, and you get that sense when you oh. are born and raised in Canada, man. In Canada, you realize that, um, you know, everybody in the entire country lives on, like, 3% of the land or something like that. It's it's kind of wild. Yeah, that's a little, uh, um, like, uh, go back to what we were talking about ages ago. I also think, like, technology plays a role in that because there's so much interconnectedness with the technology that you kind of get a feel that things are smaller than they actually are. Like if you're just playing a game with some guy from Australia, but you're in the UK, like mm. you kind of like start to like not feel as far from each other. Cause it's kind of, kind of becomes normal for you. It's like, but as you've grown up, especially the newer generations, that's all they've known. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. Like I grew up with like 56 K modems, you know what I mean? Playing on MS DOS. So it's like a little bit different, you know, for me, it's, right. it's not, it's, it, so I kind of saw the transition a little bit more. And uh, yeah, I think that the kids coming up now, uh, I think, oh man, the iPad kids, the, the, you know, the kids in the restaurants that like, if they don't get their way, they're like throwing tantrums and stuff because mm -hmm. they're like stuck to their, because their, their parents are, are the iPads. You know what I mean? The, the parents just gives the kid the iPad and that that's the parent for the, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's crazy. Yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to like minimize, by the way, what I was saying. Um, that there's like environmental issues and and things are are bad in a lot of places. Like obviously there's a lot of problems with plastic. There's a lot of problems with like dumping and all kinds of you know oil and gas. There's a lot of different problems with all that shit. Um, and the world's not big enough to handle you know like every single thing that we're doing um, damaging the world is it, obviously it has an impact and it is serious, but I right. think that like the the way forward is not reduce the population, have less people and uh you know like go backwards in technology and and science and that type of thing. We need to like progress forward because each each innovation is going to help us to understand more about our impact and you know find ways to reduce our impact on the on the planet. And like you know progressing in technology can only happen if we have a strong strong economy strong you know minds and fresh students fresh uh young people coming up who are you know hungry for and you know to make those innovations to do that science to like progress the world right and you know that's the only real way forward i think like if we weren't progressing we would we would just be polluting in the same way for hundreds of years but we're like progressively changing you know from coal to gas to nuclear power and and on and on and on right like there's different levels of um of technology and each level has like a different impact on the environment but we have to keep moving yeah. forward we can't just like sit in you know making coal power forever because that's just gonna really pollute the shit of one specific area you know what i'm this is a weird concept but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and uh, thinking of coal power, um, wasn't there like a? I think the, the, these more like up and coming countries like India and stuff. I think they're still using quite a lot of like relying quite heavily on coal and stuff. And now, like people are like pointing the finger at them, saying like, "Hey, you can't use coal to get your stuff going." But the reality is, is that how did we? How do we do it? For, like mm. beyond the resolution, you know, what I mean? that's what we were doing, like. So all these countries have done, like, you know, kind of find a cheap, dirty thing to get you off the ground and then trying to clean up your act afterwards, you know? Well, the cleanest thing to go for is nuclear power, right? If we can go to nuclear power for a lot of our electricity, it's it's great. It's the it's the best yeah. that we have, but um well, fusion would be ideal, but I mean that's a little bit away. It's a little ways away. But uh, maybe not as far away as we think, but it's uh, it's still on the horizon. Um, Probably like 20, 30, maybe. Who knows? who knows? Who knows? But, like, the problem with nuclear is that <clears throat> if we're not, if Western countries aren't developing it and making it safer and more, you know, better, stronger, uh, 
more disaster proof, that type of thing, then, you know, a lot of these other countries like China and other, you know, India or whatever are going to build like older style nuclear power plants that are maybe mm -hmm. not as safe and could cause like huge disasters. Oh, I feel like as, uh, you know, the, the Western countries really need to push for like advancement of nuclear technology because it's not going away and it's really the best solution. It's really sad what's happened to it in Japan. If you've heard about it, after the Fukushima nuclear disaster, right. they just gave up on it. They just like, well, we're not doing that anymore. And they just shut down you know, most of the nuclear power plants. And it's, it's like really messed up their economy a lot because they, they relied on that super heavily. And now they have to rely on like a lot of imports of, different fuels right. to uh you know make the same amount of electricity what they were making before and the problem with the fukushima pl plant was not that it's a nuclear power the problem is that it wasn't properly uh, taking care of it wasn't properly like prepared for any sort of event or any sort of like uh you know catastrophic uh earthquake or anything like that or tsunami right like right. they just they had some backup measures in place but they really didn't have like a, a clear one and there were there was a lot of like safety violations that were going on that just weren't being taken care of in the nuclear power plant you can you can read all about the fukushima disaster but the, there's one thing that's very clear there's a lot of corruption around it and there was uh like clear you know o oversights and not like clear thinking when it came to actually you know securing the facility which can definitely be upgraded and changed and you know but let, let's like think ahead a little bit here and we shouldn't have these type of disasters yeah i mean i guess from the people that are anti-nuclear from their angle they're thinking it is like yeah but humans are gonna make mistakes and it's like only a matter of time before like some corruption or like some you know like in the um, chernobyl like bad decision making and like you know dealing with the situation maybe egoism coming in the way of making good decisions whatever like sure you can make that argument where it's like eventually relying on humans something's going to go wrong and with something that dangerous it's like not worth it that's their angle probably right right i understand the angle um the the danger aspect i think has been overblown you can look at look at fukushima as an example like zero people died from the fukushima disaster there's like there's no recorded cases of people dying directly from that so there there is like that that fear aspect but i think that the real fear should be like other countries that have like these older style reactors they're being built all over mm. the place in china and other places we we need to like we we need to move towards it and and make it secure you know what i mean the the fear should drive more safety not right. a complete abandonment of the project do you know what i mean it's like yeah rockets are not safe either you know what i mean rocket rockets flying into space are not safe Nothing's but... safe, and I can't walk out <laughs> my front door without risk getting run over or struck by lightning. I'm sure it might be a low chance, but still a risk, right? There's a lot of there's inherent risk in just about everything that we do, right? But yeah, the the fear should drive safety. It shouldn't drive abandonment of progress. You know, that's that's regressive thinking. That's um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's unfortunate that that's that's the way that people you know, want to react to the, you know, massive um, uh, catastrophe that was Fukushima. They just want to abandon the entire project. It's not good. Uh, maybe it's an optics thing. You know, they just, like, don't want to be known as, like, the ones that polluted the world. They don't want to, like, have enough something like that happen again. You know, they're just really worried about being seen in that light, like, being, like, tainting their entire world image. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I mean that's all that's propaganda as well, right? Like it's mm. it's it's an opening for propaganda to attack them, but it is in the end propaganda. Like there's there's all this talk about how the the water, the treated water is being released in into the 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 ocean now in in Fukushima. 
but it, again, it is treated and it was, uh, you know, sanctioned by the UN, um, and environmental protection agencies. They, they know the, the levels of tritium and stuff like that are very, uh, within acceptable ranges and the people who are complaining about it, mostly the Chinese who are really upset about it. They know that they person like their own nuclear power plants release way more tritium into the ocean on a daily basis than the Fukushima power plant ever will. It's uh yeah. They they they're they're releasing way more and they didn't even have a nuclear di disaster. It's just like mismanagement and, and pollution, like you know, pumping water from the nuclear reactors into the ocean. And uh, and then blaming or you know really like getting on the uh, the bandwagon of um, getting after Japan for for their release. Anyway, it's a very complicated issue, guys. Yeah, yeah. The whole nuclear thing, though, it, it does relate back to like the population issue that we were talking about, and that relates to incels, which relates to red pill. You can <laughs> see how these things are all connected. It's all connected, guys. The Matrix is between your ears. That's the Matrix that these uh, so-called uh, red pillars are trying to escape, hence called the red pill. So the film Matrix, the Morpheus scene where he's like, you know, he got two pills. What's interesting about that scene is, is like, in a way, I feel like like Morpheus lies because he says to to Neo, he says, well, "Remember, all I'm offering you is the truth." That's not even close to what's happening there. He's not just giving him the truth because the truth could be. He tells you, and he says that later, where he shows the farms, like no one would. You have to see the farms to to really get it, kind of thing. And it's like, well, yeah, but you still could like give him the truth without like forcing him down that rabbit hole. Like, you you actually are doing a lot more than just giving him the truth in that the arc of that film. You know what I mean? I watched. A I think that's kind of breakdown of the Matrix recently, and yeah, there's there's a oh, yeah. lot of really interesting. Well, like uh... like what? Give me give me some points. Give me some points quick. Well, there was. I'm trying to remember exactly what he was talking about, but the the reflection in his glasses, um, when Neo one, one was, pill was red, one, yeah, yeah, two hands, was, one each, right, and Neo was going to take the pill. In one reflection, you know, his hand was up, and in the other reflection, Neo's hand was down, and it was like, uh, I I can't remember what it was symbolizing, but it was like, um. Uh, the 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 director's way of showing like the the lack of actual decision making or something like like, like mm -hmm. the faded decision you know what I mean like the fatalism of it yeah, yeah the fatalism or like um the the lack of actual choice you know where he was giving him the choice but he wasn't yeah. actually giving him the choice you yeah, know what I mean that's the thing exactly what's my angle yeah he's also saying he's and he's, he's yeah the whole thing is like crazy what, what morpheus isn't that the um god of dreams as well wait is that right no no Maybe. Right. you can look it up is that Nostradamus or is that the um, i don't know anyway <laughs> um <laughs> yeah man the matrix is so interesting like you can even go into like how when they're outside of the mate when they're outside the matrix you can even argue that's like another layer to the matrix you know what i mean like they're still in the controlled matrix it's just that's another la layer of matrix for the people that are like a little bit harder to deal with you know what i mean that's kind of what they're hinting at right is that that the whole like the architect was saying that the whole of the matrix um is like the the regular program and that it was too perfect before and people would like get yeah. out of it so they you. needed to like set up like a, a a matrix with that's that's difficult and hard and like you know um so people will accept it but there's always some that don't accept it and they go to um what's it called what was the city the name of the city, uh, the human city outside of, uh, outside of the matrix. Oh, Zion. Zion, right. They, they have to set up Zion and then there's the one who will reset the matrix. Right. And like the whole cycle Explosion, starts over yeah. again. And it's like, Explosion. okay, well, if that's all true, then what makes you think that that's the real human world? Or is that just what the people who won't accept the matrix will accept? as the real world you know what i mean <laughs> exactly yeah, 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 man. yeah it's like okay now this makes sense like I, I i'm like not accepting the you know the human brain they're not accepting the real world or the the matrix so they will accept like the suffering and hard 
harsh reality of the outside of the matrix you know what i mean and then uh, but that's exactly. all just another layer right I it's all realize that's what's happening yeah. yeah yeah it's layers upon layers yeah yeah that's that's a mind um, fuck that's a mind fuck <laughs> it certainly is you can even maybe argue that like morpheus like is like the the male version of the oracle like he's part of that matrix system he's the one that's making sure all those fatalism things are occurring do you remember the the scene uh i think it was the second matrix film where they go to the Mary da vinci whoever and like like afterwards so they, they don't get what they want but as they're walking out he's like um what happened he goes and he goes like why didn't that why didn't it work something like and morpheus says whatever happens lines. yeah one of my favorite yeah, whatever, lines. yeah, yeah. Whatever happened happened. It could have happened any other way, and like, so mm. we're still alive. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great line. I love that line. I say that line a lot, actually, to myself and to my wife when mm. things when things happen, when things bad things happen. Sometimes too, like what happened happened. Right. It couldn't have happened any other way. Like when I got in a car accident, when I got hit by a car, uh, riding my motorcycle, and I I I survived. Like you know. Uh -huh. That oh, that's such a shitty thing that happened to you. And I said, you know, what happened happened. Well, it couldn't have happened any other way. <laughs> Why? Because I'm still alive. You know, <laughs> that's maybe who I am today. Exactly, exactly. Because I'm still alive. That's how it happened. So, yeah, I, I I think that that's a great line. That's one of the best lines in the Matrix. And you know, when I wanted to say, oh, the the Matrix, like the last, uh, episode, like the third movie when he's in the matrix but he's actually like, or when he's outside of the matrix but he's controlling things kind of like he's in the matrix you when know he's, what I mean? he's kind yeah, of like, like bending reality like the, and shit yeah exactly he's was, kind of got matrix powers outside of the matrix so called I, outside I was like, of the that's matrix that's such a tell that he's still inside yeah. the matrix you know what i mean that is a tell mm -hmm. and i never even watched the fourth movie i think there's a fourth movie out now right like that came out a while ago. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah. I I was like, man, that I I heard about it. I heard it wasn't that good. I didn't watch it. Um, but I was like, man, that's such a missed opportunity to make another Matrix movie where that was like another level. You know what I mean? Like they get outside mm -hmm. of even that. <laughs> like they figure out that oh shit, this is actually still the Matrix, and uh, you know, yeah. move on. Like like imagine if. They, you know, they defeated the the bots, right? They have that like big clash, and the the movie ends, and then like what happens after the movie? They're like living in that wasteland, right? Or what 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 exactly happens? How does it work? You know, what's the what's the follow up? And then they realize, you know, they're living their life in like a nice way, and they realize like, wait a second, something's wrong, and they go like deeper. You know what I mean? They go to the next level. Mm -hmm. They find a way out of the matrix inside the matrix right. you know like that would be that would be really interesting that would be truly that would be truly a good movie but they they just did something weird didn't they i don't know what they did yeah I, I, can, do you want me to talk are you gonna are you gonna watch the movie do you want to know i can give you a quick like give you one or two things about the movie no nah, it's want, okay let's let's, let's let's not talk about it yeah all right, fair. That's probably best. Yeah, it's a missed opportunity, guys. They should have done something yeah. like that, where they they uh, follow up with like a a deeper level of reality. Would have been cool. Yeah, they I mean, there's also up. missed opportunities with creative writing. They queued it up. They queued it up very nicely. They had like they had all the hints there. You know what I mean? And then they like went to take their shot, and the cuba went off the table. You know what I mean? Yeah, or they thought that it would be too like complicated for the audience or something like that. Like, think about they usually do dumb things down. One of the things from the uh, videos that I've watched on YouTube say. about it is that appar say. apparently the the human beings were not used as batteries in the original. Yeah, originally originally, originally it was going to be like a hive mind consciousness type thing, and yeah. like they dumbed it down and made it the battery thing to kind of make it an easier translation for the audience. Yeah, so that people wouldn't be confused about like what the, what do they mean like a neural net. You know what I mean? A neural net between mm -hmm. all the different brains of all the human beings connected to it the matrix. It actually makes more sense because it's literally then your brain is the matrix. You're creating the matrix. The matrix controlling you, but you're creating the control of yourself. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Like you are. Yeah. It's very like metaphorical, and and it makes more sense, like technologically speaking, that the the brain has so many different connections. It would be useful to a you know and a it, sentient computer to like use for computing power. You know, rather right. than 
rather than actual electrical power, which doesn't make any sense. A human being definitely takes more power to to run than it does to, you know. It does, yeah, and it also serve. lines up with objective reality in the sense that the individual points within that network, they're the subjective realities, the individual points of consciousness, then you've got the whole actual reality, which is that hive mind consciousness. They could have weaved that all into the new movie, man. They could have said, like, no, nah, you know, cause they can't. We, it, it's actually a neural net, and like you know, they go to the next level, and it's all of them, you know, connected to the to the neural net rather than as a battery. Even crazier. Like, the battery was, even crazier? was just part of the second level of the matrix. <laughs> wait, wait, what if what if I what if I even go take it one step further and say like every single person is the one in their own matrix and every single person has their own matrix and it's all in, it, all so it's like it's like a, the par uh, the multiverse thing where like every person is a matrix but they're all connected to another matrix and that, uh, that's the overall matrix that's controlling those la layers of matrixes. Makes bro, sense, bro. We should write a movie. We should write a matrix movie. Like imagine Neo after the the a fight, you know, and um. They they go back to Zion or whatever victorious, yeah, yeah. and they realize like, wait a second, I've been doing some calculations. The amount of electricity produced by the human body is less than it would take to actually make, you know, to to keep people alive. This this doesn't They've make got sense. Such powerful and then they realize computers. they realize that they're in a matrix, <laughs> and they have to go deeper. Oh my gosh, yeah. this is all like a control program. Oh man, that would be insane. Imagine, imagine if that's what reality is. I mean, I don't mean the Matrix. Imagine if that's our reality, where like we are kind of in a similar type thing, where we're like data simulators within this Matrix. I don't know. I mean, that's that's what they're that's what they're trying to get you to think, right? They're trying mm -hmm. to get you to question your own reality. That's the point of the whole movie from the director. Which is why it was so. Which is why it's so impactful and like groundbreaking and why it's like a lot of people's favorite film like you same with fight club right it's like changes your way of thinking or looking at the world or has some kind of lasting impact on your life in some way shape or form it's like that's what good art does right it lists a response but if you can list it a response and also leave like a lasting imprint of a response that's powerful powerful very powerful yeah art is so powerful it's um th these are the best movies in in the in the world you're right the art, the movies that can like really impact you, but I mean the most. Oh, well, it's just entertainment. Thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not art then; it's just entertainment. I've always... Yeah, the most impactful thing is StarCraft, man. Like that's the most impactful art ever for us, anyway. There you go, and it's not just that, but you can think of the players as artists. It's like they've been given like imagine this: imagine you go to hell and like you're a famous painter, like Bob Ross or something. And he and you and hell is painting, but he's got such crazy complicated equipment. Like none of the paintbrushes are even straight. You know what I mean? Like really <laughs> awkward to use equipment. Something out of a fever dream. And you got to paint. That's kind of like StarCraft. You like you you got these awkward tools. The units are janky. The the, the the pathing of the units and stuff like everything's crazy hard to use. But yet we're still able to create these. Some people are still able to create masterpieces with those shoddy tools. Like a, a good craftsman never blames his tool type deal, right? It's kind of like what we're doing in StarCraft, if you think about it. We're like kind of, it's like a sense of artistry where we're like using weird implements to create interesting experiences. Oh man, it really makes me think about the ASL. I don't want to spoil anything, but <laughs> good God. Yeah, there were so some cool. crazy, crazy beautiful games that uh, came out recently. There's so many people that just like muted their thing or like paused <laughs> it. <It's> like, no, no, no. People are so. Uh, but heard about the about spoilers sometimes like i've got people sending me literally the 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 people who make it through or get eliminated in a dm like that's a real spoiler like i it's annoying to me when people say like oh don't even tell me who qualified that's a spoiler like dude come on let's let's be real here like let's 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 yeah. act like a real human person it's crazy that they're getting mad about uh, you know, telling someone well, who qualified for the ASL. It's interesting you say that because it, it circles back to the subjective reality and reality thinks everyone's got their own truth. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like in the sense of like how they see the world, what they think is right, what they think is wrong, the, the morals they live by, their values, like cause all kinds of problems. Because if you, if you believe that people should act a certain way and then you project that outwards into the world, so you actually do expect them to behave a certain way. 
you kind of save yourself the disappointment because like humans will always disappoint you, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get that angle at all. At all. No, I think that really the, like the problem with spoilers is that it removes your ability to enjoy the thing that you want to see. Right. Like if someone tells you, you know, Snape killed Dumbledore or something like that, like, Oh, now I can't read that book. <laughs> You know That's so I mean? weird you said that because the, uh, the the one that I thought of was people shouting out of the, the, the car as they drove past people out in the lines of the Harry Potter yeah. book saying like the Dumbledore thing. I, I, was, yeah. I was picturing that. Yeah. I was picturing Dumbledore dies, them shouting out Dumbledore's uh, – I just – that's all I was picturing, that they were shouting out the window, Dumbledore dies. That's all I could think of when you said that. Every yeah. type of thing. Wow, it's, it's fucking crazy you also went there. It's, it's like a mean thing to do. It's rude. It's not nice. But – Telling, you know, who is going to be in the ASL is like that's not going to remove your ability to enjoy it. Like, if you're just going to watch the ASL, it's removing your surprise for like the first quarter of a second at the beginning. Like, oh, who's it going to be today? And then you get to see who it is. <laughs> like, oh god, yeah. wow, that's shocking that you know Snow made it into really, the ASL. Wow, really, what it is? Really, uh -huh. what it is is like it's like it, say you, you they get dealt a card and what's happening is you're flipping over the card they're like no <laughs> i want to flip the card over that's what it really is <laughs> but they didn't but the game hasn't even started like yeah it's yeah. like okay let's chill right? we're just, let's, let's relax chill let's chill like, you, you can, you can get still enjoy the over. you can still enjoy the game like yeah you don't chill, know chill. how it's gonna end you just you just know what cards are being dealt at the beginning. There's like, a five of hearts in that deck. It's like, yeah, yeah, you, 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 yeah, there usually is. There usually is. Usually, yeah. <laughs> Unless it gets burned on, but burned or whatever, because you can like hold them, Texas hold them, they like burn a card, don't they? So some of them actually get used for the, that round or whatever, but yeah, they're still in the deck technically. Yeah. Strange. Strange. Strange what people what get mad do? about. But people are always mad on the internet, man. People are always mad about well, something. I yeah, and a lot of people they come from a lot of places. Sometimes it comes from they're not happy in their lives, or they've got nothing else going on, and it's like the Twitter thing. People like going on there and being like militants about any given subject. Really, they've got nothing else more interesting to do. You know, they make that their whole personality. Yeah, well, maybe not their whole personality, but they make it like their whole day to like make that yeah. comment. Yeah, you know? I would argue it's become a big part of their personality, though, if it's they're doing it that much. Right. Same way as like Starcraft's kind of part of our personality, the amount of time we spend it. But I guess you could argue it's a lot more healthy what we're doing. Yeah. And then just leaving a mean comment or like a just a dumb comment. So many dumb comments, man. It's it's crazy. I I I get you were telling me this earlier, and I've been thinking about it a lot. Is like just not responding to comments at all anymore. Maybe it's right. it's almost right. time. It's almost that time. We're not, I think so. we're not quite Tons. there yet, but I think we're getting pretty close. It's it's just about time to yeah. like let it all go. Oh. Not, not. It's funny you say that. It's really funny you say that because I was envisioning somewhere between like 5 and 10k subs is probably when you're going to realize like, okay, I need to change how I interact now. Maybe do still some commenting a little bit here and there, but not necessarily engage with all like the toxicity and read too much of it. You know what I mean? Like maybe there's like one or two authentic comments you want to engage with here and there as you go, but generally speaking, try and avoid it, you know? I've been really um, liberal with like, or conservative. I don't know what you say. Like, very uh, not interested in deleting comments. Like, I haven't really dele deleted any comments. But I like that. There I, are I appreciate that. there are tools that you can use that can make your life better on online. And I actually I recommend that other people use them. Maybe I should start using them myself. Like. For example, my wife has a yoga YouTube channel and people will come in and just post about how she has a nice ass or something like that. Right. It's like, okay, well, those comments are going to like kind of tear you down, right? Like I'm trying to do something. I'm trying to make a, a yoga video. Like I'm trying to make something. Yeah, you, uh, and There's more value you're, in this video than my ass here, guys. You right. know? You're, take, you're, you're actively making me feel bad by just like completely ignoring the content and only looking at my ass. So... I, I tell her to just like hide this person from my comments. You know what I mean? And you can just click the hide button. You can mm -hmm. click that button and anything they ever say, they can always, they can still type a comment 
but it'll never appear on your videos anymore. Like that, it will. Just yeah, it's like a ghost ban kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, it'll automatically ghost their comment. Their co comment just goes to the, you know, the waste bin. They can still see their comment, but nobody else can see it, and you can't see it either. So, right. um, yeah, it's it's like a really nice tool for people for for getting rid of people who are just toxic. And I might start doing that as yeah. well. Like, I I haven't done it in the past, but I'm I'm starting <laughs> to think about it. Some of the comments are so annoying <laughs> yeah i mean I, I the it's funny you say that like did you did you remember that big thread that you had in the most recent kcm sure. video like a 20 line i don't know how long sure. it was it's lost comment but anyway, anyway i put some dumb thing at the bottom of it as well i don't know if you read it read it but, i um, did i did read it <laughs> yeah um it, it's uh, that's not too bad obviously sometimes you get like really toxic stuff like in that case it was like feedback just uh, maybe to do it in a little bit of an unhinged way kind of thing you know what i mean did you see his other um, his other comment the that guy same cool. guy he said um that just you know just fyi or just for your information um <laughs> you should probably think about buying a microphone that is uh oh he said like oh that's so sweet you should probably think about buying a microphone that's not a gaming headset. Like, go for something that's like two separate. Like, bro, the fuck mm. are you? Why are you telling us this? Like, you think that we're buying a microphone? Like, we're buying a gaming headset? Like, what the fuck? It it just seemed it just it's like you're almost like talking down to me, but almost in a way that's like, are you just are you just dumb or are you? Are you actually serious or are you just talking down? Like, I don't know what the angle is. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where it's like, I don't even, yeah. I don't even want to respond to this because it's like, I'm probably going to take it the wrong way in a way that he's not intending it to, but it's, it's just a really stupid, dumb, dumb comment to say, like, of course, of course we're not going to buy a <laughs> gaming headset like what the fuck <laughs> like that is the most basic thing like you've you've literally got a gaming headset it's like Do you know what it is uh it's ahead. literally that thing it's a done it's a dunning kruger effect right it's where you know like a little a tiny bit about something and you suddenly start to think you know everything about something and right. you act like that like imagine if i thought i knew everything about starcraft and whenever someone said something i didn't know or agree with i was like rah, 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 you know if i had that attitude you know what i mean like it's that kind of thing yeah. And that's always they're like, oh, it's like an armchair general, you know, they, 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 they're coming in and like through the lens that they've got everything figured out. It's funny how some people will think that because we've got like a YouTube thing going, we've got like a YouTube show that we're like professionals, you know what I mean? Like we really know what we're doing. And then other people yeah. will think that we're like basically, you know, uh, complete noobs, like total like teenagers yeah, in, a, in a basement, you know, with no uh no experience at all oh, it's like we're, we're we're in the middle you know we're like we're like it's on our way world. to being sort of professional but like um it's, pro. it's funny that people will will be totally on one spectrum or the other or totally that's, on that's one the thing of the left and right isn't it it's like they can't look at anything anything from a nuanced lens it's either one or zero black or right red or blue it's just all that. It's, it's crazy to me. That's like ev that's everyone's thinking, but that it's because of the culture. Everyone's like they're not necessarily narcissistic. It's just that some people, we as humans, have a few like narcissistic traits and what have you. And some people end up like a little bit too much of that. And I think they they can't see outside of themselves. So you can't see the forest from the trees. And they're so mindlessly self indulged and entitled that they they can't even look at things from a different lens. Well, I mean. How do we change that? I don't think there's a there's a lot of options therapy? available to us. Therapy. <laughs> oh, well, we could talk about therapy. I mean, there's some things I want to say about therapy, especially yeah, as, as it relates to men's issues. You did uh, you did write down some stuff about therapy, so go ahead, go ahead, tell us about therapy. Tell us about therapy, okay, guys. Therapy. Let me tell you about therapy. You go in and you talk about your problems, and then you suddenly realize, hang on a minute, this person is financially incentivized to keep me unwell. And then you realize, damn, what do I do now? No, I'm just joking. Uh, why am I? So, yeah, men's issues. Uh, I think there's the, the biggest issue, just to give a little bit of, like, credence to maybe, like, it's not all, say, the intel community. Like, let me give a bit of pushback on that and say maybe it's not all of their fault. You know, there's not really a lot of support for men out there, and especially when it comes to things like therapy. 
I would argue it's like extremely female orientated in the sense that I would argue that men require a much more like side by side problem orientated communication styles, like sitting around a campfire or next to each other fishing or whatever it is, doesn't matter, like working on an engine together. And you're, you're focused on this problem or threat or whatever it is, but at the same time, you're able to like, you know, weave in whatever it is, like problems about your wife or something. And that's much more natural for men to communicate in that way, right? Whereas this, commu- this, this therapy stuff is literally like face-to-face communication. And maybe no surprise that these guys aren't able to open up very much. It feels maybe a bit more awkward for them. Yeah, maybe that's why something like AA is like very popular, you know, sitting around in a big group you know, just discussing problems and not like, right. you know, directly confronting somebody or having like a, a one-on-one. But right. um, I know a lot of people who are in, <clears throat> a lot of people who are in therapy. I know um, family members who go to therapy regularly and, I I don't know if it has the same effect on men as it has on women. It seems to have like some positive benefits, but I'm, I'm sure, sure there is. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I would argue that not enough. Mm-hmm. Certainly not enough, given the the current mental health epidemic. You could <laughs> argue in the uh, the world right now for men, especially. Yeah. So, and with the expensiveness, like how expensive it can be, uh, to to hire a mental health professional to to give therapy, it's like being more and more uh, farmed out to people like red pill, you know, the red Mm -hmm. pill uh, therapists, basically people who are going to tell you the way to live, tell it, tell you what you need to do to be, you know, satisfied, to be happy, to get what you want. Um, To be an improved in. So basically, right. Whereas what therapy is meant to do is to like discuss your problem or to like think about your problems directly and then you find out the proper solution. You know what I mean? Like the, the therapy is supposed to be like a lens to where you just, you talk about um, what's going on with you. And then the, the therapist is supposed to ask you questions that sort of lead you towards your, you yourself figuring out what you need to do, because basically most of the time, you know what you need to do. And I think that, like a lot of the, yeah. this, this is the reason why a lot of like um, psychotherapy, like psycho psychotropic drugs, can be sort of like a therapy as well, like psilocybin and stuff mm-hmm. like that, where so. you literally know what you need to do. You are the thing that's standing in your own way of being happy, and uh, whether it's by therapy or by taking these drugs, uh, these uh, mushrooms or whatever you're going to be like opening your own eyes and then realizing what you need to actually do. And then, and you know, figuring out a way to do it. Joe, I don't know if, if you want to talk about this kind of thing on the podcast too much, but can I, can I, should I talk about some of my experience with the silly Simon stuff? Go ahead. All right. So I don't know how well versed our listeners are going to be. So I'll maybe talk about it in as chill terms as I can. So I've done quite a few um, psilocybin, trip, psilocybin trips over the years. Uh, and most recently, about um, actually, oh, interesting, a month ago today, because today just ticked over past midnight. It's like 2 20 a.m. for me now. So, literally, a month ago today was my birthday, basically. And um, yeah, I did a, a monster dose. Like uh, Terence McKenna would say, like five grams is considered a heroic dose. I did 10 grams of uh, dried mushrooms on my birthday. In, a dark room and just meditated and man it was uh, to say it was a life-changing experience but it's probably like not even cutting it you know what i mean the reason why i'm not reacting really strongly to this is because i've already heard the you, you've already talked to me about a bunch about that but that's a ridiculous amount of yeah. mushrooms to take man it's crazy but uh, we already talked about but this to be fair, i didn't just to be fair though, I didn't just suddenly like start taking mushrooms in the first dose was 10 grams. The first dose I ever took was one gram just to kind of like get an idea of what it was and maybe a little bit giggly and like seeing a bit more vibrant colors and maybe seeing a little bit of waviness in the room, kind of like a, almost like a liquidation of the room where it like, you know, the outline of things is like, a, you know, much more fluid and maybe like almost like it's like plastic wrapped or something. I don't know how to describe it. 
and then I've done slightly heavier doses uh, since then, and I kind of moved up towards like you know two grams, and eventually we started hitting the more like mid range doses. So I was a big dude though, so these doses actually aren't hitting me as much as someone else. Like I mean, I'm like two hundred plus pounds at the time. I think it was way heavier than that. I was like probably like two fifty or two sixty or something. So I was having to like have probably a slightly higher dose than other people to get the kind of similar effect. So I did start doing that. I started calculating my weight and then increasing my dosage based on that. So someone that I was doing it with maybe on two grams and I'm like closer to three or whatever it was. And eventually I kept upping a dose. Blah, blah, blah. And I realized that the deeper I went, the more comfortable I was. Cause basically it's like, they're showing you, it's like the universe is in a way is going to make you afraid in some way. And that could be because of some unresolved trauma from your childhood or some insecurity or whatever. And you're going to be faced with that on the other side of the trip. If you're not prepared, so it's all about setting your mindset before the trip. And before my big monster dose of like 10 grams, I did all that. I like kind of worked through everything I could possibly think of introspectively. That might be an issue Like all my like, issues i had as a kid things that i'm insecure about or whatever like i just went into all of that shit just try to unload it all process it and try and detach from it in terms of like letting it go in like a, a therapeutic way right where you like let yourself feel the thing and then you try and let it go and try and detach from it too much and did all that before the trip and setting your mindset like that and maybe even setting the intention of the trip like if your intention is to go and have a good time just have like a, like a party drug type deal which one we listen to some music and whatever you set that intention for the trip and you you will get that kind of trip. Whereas if you are really solemn and you're like meditative and you're like going into introspection and stuff, that's the kind of thing you're going to get as well. But it's even further than that. Even so much as I do, I, the way I consume it is in a tea and even just the flavor of tea as in honey or lemon or like berry flavor tea will change the trip. It's that like crazy how much something can influence a trip. Even when you listen to a song, it's like that song can like take over the entire room. It's almost like a stage opens up from like a fourth dimension and like you're inside this Mandela and like, I can't even begin to put it into like human words. The English words are just far too limiting to even begin to describe some of the stuff that this, this does to you. But it's almost like your brain is not necessarily rewired. It's almost like the wires will become detached for a second and you can like rewire them how you want. So you can kind of like, kind of hack your own brain in a way and sure you can have bad experience doing this stuff but reality is usually those bad trips are induced from you because you're like it's almost like it interfaces you with the universe where you like become the universe and you're able to ride the waves of that trip in any way you want much like a surfer but like um the guy adam watts said you can choose to swim you can choose to just stay with the waves and let the waves carry you you can choose to struggle against the waves like you're anxious and you're scared and you fight against it and it's going to tire you out and exhaust you, right? Or you can choose to even swim with the current and gain that momentum as well as your own faculties on top of that and like really start to like dive deeper. And the more that you lose the fear and detach yourself from the anxiety of like, whoa, what the, what, why am I having this crazy trip experience? As long as you just be okay with that, accept everything and just let go of that anxiety, the more you see, the more layers of the young and you can peel back and the more that you're just like, show me more, show me more, show me more, the more you'll be shown. The less you're affected by it, the more you'll be shown. And it's almost like the universe is trying to bother you. Like, I need to see that, is this guy for real? It's like, it's like it's like a zen training thing like how zen are you because if you're not really zen you can't go to the next layer but if you can keep showing that you're zen as you go through the layers you keep going it's the best way i can explain it in layman's terms well go on tell us what you learned from this latest trip <laughs> to be honest with you i learned things that i don't want to share with people because it's like very personal to me but there are some things i can talk about so like i could talk about it more from like what the experience was like angle so at one point in time, like I was in the trip, like in the pitch blackness for so long. And that's actually really daunting because like, it's almost like you're in an infinite void. And when you're in that kind of high dosage, you don't really feel gravity anymore. It's almost like you're like floating in like a, a vat of fluid, like almost like you're like, a, like, an, like an alien in like a test tube or something, but you're like, float, you're suspended in liquid, you know what I mean? Um, you kind of like lose a sense of self entirely. Like the reality itself breaks down. There is no reality anymore. But the, what happened after I did that crazy, like long stint of being in the pitch blackness, a few hours into the trip, I knew that, okay, now it's time to take control of the trip. Because one thing you can do with psilocybin is you can use a joystick. And I, I, I'm, I'm describing it that way. It's not what people do. But um, so, for example, I use uh, THC from weed, from sativa strains. As like a joystick to now like navigate around in that space once i've already gone 
deep as I can into it. So first I'm like diving down, down and down, letting myself sink to like the, as deep, close to the bottom of the ocean as I can. And as soon as I get as far deep as I can, I'm now going to go into my little submersible vehicle, which is the THC, the weed, the marijuana. And I'm going to like use that as like a, a, a car. And I'm going to drive around using that car because it, 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 when you're on, when you take weed and psilocybin together, whoa, different kind of experience. And you can literally, it feels like you've stolen the devil's car and you can now choose to drive to heaven, but you've got to drive through seven layers of hell to get there. And it's like the deeper you are rooted, like it's like a building, a building, a like I think John Peterson said this, like the, the further down the roots of the tree go down into hell, the further the branches can reach up to heaven. You know what I mean? It's kind of like that. It's kind of, you have to go really down deep into this crazy abyss to then kind of like launch yourself up to ascension. Yeah. I mean... Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Maybe people have taken heavier doses have some idea what I'm talking about. I don't know. uh, um, I've taken like three grams, I think four grams maximum. But uh, I haven't done it in pure darkness. So like... How heavy are you? I'm... um, What were you at the time? Sorry. 90 kilo. Okay, so you're a little bit lighter than me. You're like 15 kilo lighter than me, roughly. Uh, Yeah, so I would say... I guess that's like that's, that's that's still pretty high. I would say that's like you know that's still a high dose, right? It's just it's oh, not yeah. like monster, but it's still I mean, pretty high. It's still you, pretty high. You feel it for sure. And uh, I I got some really fantastic insight from it as well, and just like really deep connective feeling. Um, when I was with my with my wife, and um, yeah. I mean, it was a great experience, fantastic experience. It's completely legal now in Canada, so you can uh, buy it online. It just gets delivered directly to your house. There's uh, no problems at, uh, whatsoever. You can take it whenever you want. This is like it's it's a beautiful time um, for for trippers for people who are. It, it feels a little bit like like you know the '60s, right? It's obviously not mm. nothing in comparison, but it's like. You know, these things are all now kind of available, and we can all just That's try the Wild them West, we though, as well. Yeah, the issue with like the issue with like um, tabs, acid. Um, you have no way you, what you don't know what part of the sheet you get. So you might get like a corner of the sheet where like it's not that strong. You might get a corner of the sheet which is like crazy strong. You don't know what you're getting. Right now, it's a little bit more controlled, um, but it, it's it's definitely an experience that uh, I wouldn't I would never take back. I think it's a it's a great great drug i mean there's a million yeah. different types of drugs there's caffeine there's you know tobacco um there's obviously weed all kinds of different crazy drugs that you can take all kinds of different antidepressants uh you know ssris and stuff like that that are available that you can get pretty easily by yeah. just going to the doctor but i would definitely recommend before you take any of those things that you try a mushroom trip because like a, a psilocybin a low dose of psil- psilocybin can really help you to like you said rewire your brain like it removes the connections and it can help you to like realize what it is that you're doing to fuck up your life and right. what i what you can do to un unfuck your life and uh it's generally a pretty simple solution that you've just been kind of ignoring that's been at the side at the periphery for a really long time and you've just gotten so used to ignoring it and not thinking about it that you you can't even like realize it anymore. Maybe you still realize it, but you think you can't do anything about it. And when you yeah. take that trip and you you kind of like feel that connection and you think about your life in a really deep level and you really like consider, you know, uh, all about you know what it is that's going wrong with you and what you can do better you will realize that like oh it's just that thing that that one thing that i was really fucking up and i can do something about it and i'm going to do something about yeah. it it could completely i would say that and especially like at the lower doses that stuff's really good like you don't need to go crazy high with the doses to do introspection if, if anything when you do the higher doses you want the opposite you want to get do the introspection first to get mm. get all that taken care of, so it doesn't catch you up in the the, the deeper stuff. Right. It'll limit you and like, it'll, yeah, it'll mess you up a bit. 
Yeah, you'll get trapped in those thoughts. You want to like get yeah, exactly. rid. You want to get rid of. You, you know, do the low dose. Realize what's what you're doing wrong. Fix those things, and then when you go into the deeper dose, you're not going to get trapped exactly. by those those thoughts. Yeah, that's that's true. That's true. Well, I don't yeah, know. Do it in a healthy way, guys. Don't go crazy. Do not do it. Do not and just and don't just go out and do fucking ten grams of shrooms because you heard Papa Jean do it. Okay, please, for the love of God, do not do that. I'm 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 crazy. Okay, and like I I did a lot of introspection and a lot of like trying to learn how to be a cosmonaut, so to speak, before I did that. I didn't just do that just for a laugh. I planned it out very meticulously to make sure it couldn't possibly, or at least very less likely to go wrong. You know what I mean? Well, I bet you guys didn't expect to hear all of these topics discussed by two StarCraft casters um, when they when you heard that they were doing a podcast. But there you go. You, this is what you get. <laughs> it's uh, what you get, boys. <laughs> what, what other topics do we have here, Shun? Are we just about ready to end this one? Uh, I mean, I'm not... Oh, you mean end this particular thing? Episode, yeah. The subject. Uh, I mean, up to you. I mean, <laughs> I mean, me, me personally, uh -huh. my, my brain gets going more the longer I go. So it's like I'd, I'd rather keep going, but it's up, it's up to you, man. Well, give me another topic then, Shun. What do we got to talk about? Uh, well, I wanted to talk a little bit more. I want to go circle back to the therapy stuff and just quickly like give it like an evolutionary perspective on the things I was talking about. Sure. So yeah, the thing I was talking about earlier, um, basically I'm going to say that about men evolving to work side by side, needing to keep their gaze focused on the, pro the problem or threat and then not needing to do this face-to-face -face dedicated verbal communication that like we were talking about earlier. But I'm also wanting to talk about how simple the solutions can be to that. It's not like I'm just going to sit here and like say, oh, by the way, this is how like messed up the world is. If I can with my limited ape brain. I'm going to try and think of some simple solutions to things if I can. And I think there is. I think, like, let's say hypothetically, in a relationship, there's a, you know, a, man, a husband and wife and uh, having some relationship issues. And the, the, she, she's, she, she's screaming at him and he's yelling at her and they're like fists balled in each other's faces all the time because they tried doing the talking thing face to face. They tried going to therapy and it just wasn't working. Well, just wasn't cutting it, right? One thing they didn't try, maybe. It's like even just something as simple as pillow talk, where like they're not even looking at each other, like laying down side by side in bed, looking up at the ceiling or whatever, just talking, just talking. And I think there's enough of that going on where it's like this more side by side style of communication, like sat down on the side of the bed, side by side or on the sofa. Just but talking in the like they're not just sitting down on the sofa watching a, a, something on Netflix. I mean like actually sitting down, having a dedicated hour a week where it's like, right, for this hour a week, we're gonna we're gonna sit side by side and talk about what we need to talk about. And that way the rest of the week you can be more chill with each other because you know that you got this hour to like really hash it out or whatever. Yeah, I think sitting side by side can be can be useful in talking. I, I think that also like sustained eye contact with a partner can really promote a lot of like understanding and uh and like empathy with the other person like when you really like I think you stare need if you stare someone like, if you're always like walking by each other and talking without like really looking at each other and like you you can kind of do some creepy shit like it's it's in everybody's nature to kind of like piss off on some of the chores or something right. like that or like you know not do what you're supposed to do and kind of let the other person take the reins in certain things just because you know they're that's what they do they do that thing and you you know you take care of your thing and you just kind of like let them do their thing but when you uh or you, you know and let them take over more of the the housework or more of certain aspects of life like more of the uh you know whatever it is that needs to get done around the house or needs to get done uh, in your guy's life. But if you like deeply look in the other person's eyes and like really connect with them, it's very hard to, uh, you know, lose that empathy. You know, you, you, you really gain like a deep empathy with that person and you like really feel their struggle as well. Um, mm -hmm. just by looking in their eyes and like, you can, Yeah. It's it's just really really good for the communication. But go on, say what you want to say about uh, side by side as well. Like I think it I think it is a good way. What you're saying, well, I do, talk. 
But no, I think, I think but what you're saying is true, though. It's it's not like what you, you're saying is is no not like I think both things are are needed. So sure. I think there should be like uh, like an hour of like non intimacy side by side, like kind of serious communication. We able to hash out financial issues or whatever the case may be. Um, but then I also think, yeah, you do need to build intimacy, and this is the thing that a lot of maybe men are lacking in doing because they're for whatever reason, I'm not going to sit here and like assume exactly what's going on because everyone's going to have their own nuanced worldview and their experiences dictating why they act the way they do. But yeah, I'd say argue like that's there's no there's no intimacy. I love the the red pill in in so guys they they don't understand that like even if they do get into a marriage right they're not going to do the little things that are actually going to like have long term positive effects and they might even do the opposite. They might do very negative things like the insecure ones for example might do the oh you can't go out wear, wearing that attitude a little bit too much you know what i mean and like to the point where she's not allowed to dress sexy anymore and then she's not going to be, be sexy anymore eventually you're going to literally like train her into not being sexy to anyone including you right and there's like there's such a transactional nature to the way that they they view relationships that they um kind of like build it into their they, they create the problem that they're worried about you know what i mean like the problem of mm. oh women just want you for your money is like when you treat women like in such a transactional way like okay i make the money the wife takes care of the house you know what i mean or the wi wife does x y and z right and like you know mm -hmm. what am i getting out of this what are you bringing to the table do you know what i mean that type of shit right. it's like um when it's that like transactional you create that sort of like gold exactly. digger um energy you know what i mean like you you attract yeah. those type of people who are interested in a transactional relationship yeah yeah man that's not healthy man. and that's why they should do like the the self there's a lot of self improvement in terms of like going to the gym and learning how to like pick up girls but where's the self improvement in like their self love and like the actual genuine self esteem underneath all that you know cuz they're not comfortable and accepting of themselves then they're not going to find people like that are going to be accepting of them the real them they're going to be accepted for the superficial stuff only it's true it's true yeah with the evolutionary perspective thing with the yeah basically i'm kind of getting at when we when we, once upon a time so to speak you know it'd be kind of useful to men to evolve being able to communicate while not being too distracted you know what i mean in the sense of you want to be able to like be able to still deal with potential incoming threats or still be able to work on problems like say you're you're you know doing the necessary things day to day to survive as a tribe or whatever because there's a lot of things uh, you need to be able to do. It's not like it's not like today where it's all specialized and you've got like, you're really good at one thing and that's what your job is focused on. Like you're really good at like you know software engineering or whatever it is, right? You're specialized in that one niche thing. Um, back in those times, you kind of had to learn a bit of everything and do lots of all kinds of different stuff, like jack of all trades type deal, right? So. You didn't have. You might not have even that much time to have proper communication. Maybe you got to sit around a fire and eat and stuff. But again, same thing, side by side, focused on a group activity together. You're all sat around a campfire eating together. You're all side by side still. Yeah, and I mean, I think that people, guys, they kind of crave that feeling of like, oh, I'm I'm the guy in the tribe who does X. You know what I mean? I'm like the arrow maker yeah. or whatever. You know. And that's my contribution to the group. And so I don't, I don't do anything else. I just do this one thing. And then, you know, my future is taken care of. Like my, my needs are taken care of, you know what I mean? But, um, mm -hmm. the, I mean, if you're in a, if you're in a tribe, like, yeah, you're the arrow maker, but you're, you're a human. You're part of the, you're part of this group. You do what is necessary, what we need at the moment. You know what I mean? What, whatever it is. Yeah. You have to be kind of like that jack of all trades. Even though you have a speciality, you still have to be able to to adapt and change because the needs of the group adapt and change constantly, right? Like if someone Absolutely. dies or it's someone's not cool. capable, someone's it? sick, some something's not going right. Like you have to be able to adapt. Yeah, and that's all. That's all. It, there's the whole like survival of the fittest thing. It doesn't even mean like. 
you know, being super strong or whatever. It doesn't mean any of that. It just literally means like the fittest gene pool, the most able to pro procreate and adapt to the environment and whatever form that may take. And you might find that all those like nerdy guys that aren't going to the gym, maybe that's just what that new era needs. They need a bunch of nerdy guys working in office cubicles doing coding or whatever. Like, And, and you might find that there's people out there that right now are in cells, have nothing going for them, but maybe they've got some talents and skills that might be super useful to society in like five, 10 years time. It's possible. I'm not saying everyone's going to be like that, but it's possible there's some guys out there really struggling with society because their skill set or whatever, their DNA, like their, what it, cause you, you haven't even unlocked most of your DNA, right? And as you go out and do everything in the world to untap that DNA, so to speak. So most of them probably have all this untapped potential they're not even aware of, but there's probably some that do have skills, it's just that those skills aren't as useful to society right now. But who knows, in a year time, that might be a marketable skill. It's funny that you say about... Um about coders needing coders because recently I've been seeing a lot of chatter that uh, coding is going to be out the window here pretty soon. Like AI, AI. is going to take over yeah. all of that and 100%. it'll just be like, you just write a prompt. I want a program that does X and yeah. then the AI writes it and you don't even do you know, have to do you know what the new that. job will be. The new, the new job will not be coding. The new job will be being Writing good prompts. at getting it to do being good to write prompt. Exactly. You're then like, a, uh, you're, you're the AI generator then, right? You're like the, the you're the syntax. That's right. what you are. You're a professional syn, syn, syntaxer. Yeah, you're just you're just a AI prompt generator. You just figure you know see the problem and understand how to write a prompt to fix it. That's it. That's how do a, you feel about AI in general? Like, are you like a pro AI? Let's get it going faster the better. Or are you like a well let's dial it back a little bit so we like regulate it and maybe keep it in the box more? Or you or like a we shouldn't do it at all kind of guy like. I don't know. I'm um the the jury's still out on that. Like we're 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 really What's your emotional like, reaction? My emotional reaction is that it doesn't really matter. Like my emotional reaction is that uh this is like another stage. You know what I mean? This is like mm. cars being invented or you right. know, like another source of power being invented, the course, like it's the technology, yeah. yeah, like computers. You know, there was like all this weirdness when a, when computers were invented because, you know, for hundreds of years there was like a records keeping mm -hmm. group of people, like you know, the people who were always keeping the records uh, uh, at the basement of the uh, skyscraper or whatever. Every building, every company had like a records room where they would keep everything and filing cabinets and. You know, if they wanted something, they would call it up from the records room and like, okay, well, we're going to have to get rid of all those. Like, those people are gone now, right? Those people don't exist because it's just a, it's a server room now, right? It, it mm. feels to me like the same sort of thing. It's just like something, some things that people have done for a very long time is now going to become automated by AI. But the problem with that is like, the problem with that thinking is like, well, how many? You know what I mean? It might be a lot. <laughs> you know, it might be more hmm. than just the people who were replaced by computers uh, at the turn of the century, you know? It might be, like, groundbreakingly a lot of people, like, crazy, crazy a lot of people getting Maybe like displaced. 30% of the workforce or more, who knows? Who knows? But that's that's why I say the jury's still out. It's like, okay, well, it's going to be a disruption. There's always disruptions. There's always change. The change is usually you know mostly for the good um but you know the jury so we ha we'll have to see we'll have to see I'm how sure it'll be many transitional people. as well yeah. it's not going to be like every job chops right away it'll be like coding's no. the first to go maybe digital artists will take a big hit right away you know so there'll be there'll be certain um industries or whatever you want to call it like hit the worst first but then i think it'll you know have a knock-on effect in some of these other areas like say your autonomous driving like really gets figured out to the point where like there's no more truckers anymore completely no more truckers or maybe no more ubers you know what i mean like it's all yeah whatever whatever happens you know yeah it's interesting hmm. it'll be it'll be kind of an interesting time that we're going to be living through here Shun, with ai yeah, yeah well, we, we we 
we we rode up from the we chilled the transition into the computer era, right? We saw like you know the fifty six k modems and like the Windows ninety five computers, and we saw that that slowed technology. We saw that the brick phones, the first you know the iteration of mobile phones and stuff. We yeah. we saw that transition, and now we're seeing the next transition. We we if anything are like one one of the most interesting generations in the sense of we're going to see two major transitions. We were born at the start of one transition to see that first transition, and now we're we're seeing the the, the one that comes after that. Mm hmm. Yeah, a lot of a lot of generations. Be the wise one. A lot of generations only see like one one transition, <laughs> you know, one big big change. But right, we, we we're gonna see, the, see two. a bunch. We might see a bunch. Yeah, or more. <laughs> Especially with the life expectancy thing. Who knows? Maybe we'll see even more of the transhumanism thing. Like we get to like forty years old, fifty years old, and suddenly our life's extended past a hundred years. And the only thing they got to figure out is how to regenerate brain cells. Then we're really going. Not that I want that, by the way. It'll be weird. It'll be a be a that's, that's, that's the issue right now is the brain cell thing. We can we could probably handle everything else regenerative wise. Mm -hmm. We could probably extend their life quite a lot, but it's the brain cells right now that's the, 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 the bottleneck. Right. Once they're dead, we can't really regenerate them at the moment. At the moment. Well, someday we'll be those those heads in jars like uh on Futurama. Futurama. You know, yeah. casting casting Starcraft in the year three thousand. Yeah, man. Oh, we should get. We, all right, do you know what we should do at some point? We should commission like an artist to like a, someone that's not like too expensive to get to actually like kind of like maybe like do like artwork of me and you in those jars with, with this art style of Futurama. You know what I mean? <laughs> that would be fun. And we could use that. We could use that on like the the banner for the podcast, where it's like you've got our logo, but like on the side of the logo is like the two heads in the jar on either side. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. Yeah. That'd be interesting. <laughs> that's people for anyway. All right, guys. Yeah. This is the episode one of the Doom Drop. Hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, conversation between me and Shun. We're gonna be doing this like uh, once a week, maybe. Shun, is that that yeah, yeah. suitable for you? We might, I mean, there might be like some other stuff we do on the side. Who knows? But yeah, for the, this particular podcast, this particular thing, it's gonna be once a week, pretty much. We'll probably be dual releasing it. We're not sure just yet what we're gonna do with this thing. It's just maybe getting off the ground here. So. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching the very first episode of the Doom Drop podcast. Yeah, thanks, guys. I really appreciate you uh, stopping by, tuning in. Um, also, we'll have better production, audio quality and stuff coming up as well. Uh, so hopefully this will get a lot of better, a lot very quickly. Uh, this will hopefully take off in the sense of how well we produce it. And hopefully you can, guys can enjoy more of this content soon. Thanks, guys. Thanks.